good. A little bit worse than yesterday.
with a, another editing uh, video. And now I have to kind of go through and check all my stuff <laughs> um, before I start. Make sure you guys are seeing everything because I kind of have a weird setup going on. All right. So if I'm looking up all the time, it's because my monitor is, I have three monitors. I have one uh, below my center monitor that you guys are actually seeing, and then one that's my uh, like digital hard pad, and then I have a keyboard above that, <laughs> and then I have my main monitor, and then I have a uh, big giant monitor above. So it's like a lot of looking up and down, kind of bananas. So yeah, I actually have like a 55 inch screen that's a HD monitor above me and that's one that I use so that when I have uh, people over um, like teaching I can show them some stuff so all right I'll make it easier for them to see so I am actually streaming on YouTube TikTok now and Twitch all at the same time so I'm kind of curious how this is going to go <laughs> So actually, I need to go over to. All right, so you guys are seeing everything good on YouTube. It looks like. And now I have to set up. Uh, let me set up. Got it. Let's see. Um, all right, so I gotta do this real quick. space on, the, on TikTok to type in your titles. Huh. I'm kind of learning this, like I just figured this out today, and I am, this live is limited to those 18 years and older. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for helping. Okay, sure. Uh, why not? Okay, so I think that's good, right? Uh, choose a topic. Uh, choose a topic. Uh, definitely not dance. It won't let me set it, so I have to do this kind of manually during um, the initial part of this setup, so just bear with me for a second. Um, man, there's not a lot of categories to pick through. I've never done TikTok before. I, I've never streamed. Um, I haven't done anything but just maybe I've like posted some little short videos. And as far as live streaming, this is it. So first time, and just gonna hit this uh, button here. Hey, look at that, I actually have a screen. Okay, I think it's working. I don't know, but we'll see. So anybody that comes in on any one of these, whether it's uh, YouTube or Twitch or TikTok, just shoot me a message so you can hear me okay and I'll turn the music down because I know it's probably loud so let's get the music to go down all right so all right where is why do I hear the music let's see can I just turn that like that and now now I have to okay I'm just gonna <laughs> all right I'll just turn the volume down on the music stuff okay I don't know if you can hear the music but it should be real faint in the background if you can um, desktop audio all right I hope that sounds okay. I need to go check real quick. All right. Go here, live, and, and then what? Turn on the audio. Kind of doing this late, so we'll see what happens. Oh, wow, that music is loud for you guys. Okay. Wow. Okay. 
I don't know. Hopefully it's okay now. Can you guys, is it, is it crazy loud? Let me see. I think I have, oh, the music, I do have it up really loud. Man, okay, so I have like two different music settings. So I turned that down now, so that should be, okay, sorry. I think I was blasting you guys with some crazy music stuff. So hopefully that's not so bad. I'll go back over here and check real quick. Yeah, all right, good. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, so. Okay, just skip all that part, whatever that was. And I think if uh, you guys are tuning in, I'm sorry for the loud music at first. I was clicking on the wrong thing, but it uh, should be good now. All right, it's a little complicated, I have to say. I got the Twitches and the TikTokers and the YouTubes, so, <laughs> so that's all and and somebody just subscribed okay that's cool uh so all right okay cool all right so i did a video a few days ago where i was kind of doing similar thing to this like a live stream of just editing and going over some photography stuff that i've been doing and i just have a set of um images that are a little on the uh i would say kind of more advanced side of editing where the uh, subject is like backlit and so the the image is dark on the front side and so we're not really shining light on to the model and uh, i can show you that here so right here is the original image so this is the image that we started with uh last week or not last week just a few days ago when i kind of did this little sample uh, and we had some challenges with uh, blemishes on the face and um, whoa some stuff is running slow so so we were like uh, all right we got to remove all this bring up the lighting and balance everything out and the result was this photo here and it should switch over so things are a little laggy. Maybe I'm doing too much. So if my computer explodes at the end of this or during this stream, I'll probably just pop up back on to YouTube rather than have the whole Twitch thing going. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, let's see. All right. The twist, Twitch. What is that? TikTok messages are doing some stuff over there. All right. Okay. So... Today or tonight, because it's late, it's 12 o'clock, and I am trying this out. So I have a variety of images, and I think we're going to start with this one. Okay, so I have a couple here. Let's see, we have one here. Yeah, so I have between these two. I don't know if you guys can see that, but if you can, you kind of get an idea. Uh, just slidle, uh, slidle, slight changes in just the positioning. So we have this one, and then we have that where the head is down a little bit, and this one where it looks like the head's a little more straight on to the camera, and this area right here in a rib cage is probably a little bit more flattering with the light. So here it's, uh, they're really about the same, I guess. I don't know, it's a little bit different and I, I don't really know i think i like this one just because of the head uh, positioning so before we take this into photoshop i'm in lightroom now and i want to kind of get the i don't know the lighting a little more balanced out and the way the scene was set up originally uh there's a huge window over to uh, the back left of her and uh, and then over to the right is really just a wall of darkness <laughs> so that's just really no light um, over in this uh, right side of the image and then i'm shooting kind of what i call on the dark side so i'm shooting the shadow side of this image and i'm using this light on the left this backlit area to create like a nice rim light around her and then 
there is a light over here that I have off to the side that's just pointing and adding a secondary uh, rim light kind of on to the right side of her, or I guess that'd be her left or so, but the right side of the image. And so that just helps, you know, highlight some of the hair and kind of just separate her from the background. And when I shoot this type of shot, I try to, you know, somewhat expose for the brightest area, which is going to be the back. Because if you don't do that and you expose for the darkest area in the foreground and you're shooting this style of uh, kind of low-key photography, then all of this behind her will just be super blown out white. And, you know, and it won't really make for an appealing image. You won't really see any of this stuff back here. It'll just look all wonky. And then you'll try to bring it into Lightroom and you'll sit there and, you know, try to balance out the, the exposure and you're bringing it up and you're like, you know, and it's going to be kind of crazy. So you can see how nuts it gets already. So... I am shooting on a Sony, so I tend to shoot more on the darker side of things because Sony cameras tend to pick up a lot of details in uh, the darker areas. I think that's uh, just a... Uh, I don't know if it's a, really a side effect or a benefit, but <laughs> I think it's probably more of a benefit and probably because Sony's are just really good uh, night vision technology built into everything that they do. So they just have really good sensitive sensors. And so they can really pick up and bring up details from the darkness. But if you overexpose and everything's too bright, like it would be like this in the background, you know, and then she would be um, all exposed properly, uh, you would not be able to recover any of these details back there so you kind of shoot dark get these details and that way everything is there like you can see if i bring it down the light you can see this fabric over here and if i put it back at the exposure you really can't see it so what i'll do is i'll bring down like maybe the highlights and it'll bring some of that uh, fabric that was in front of the window so that you can see it and then um when I bring up the highlights, like, or I'll bring down the highlights, I will actually re uh, expose the shot over in Lightroom and I'll bring it up a couple of maybe a stop or two. So I see you're about a stop and a half. So I want to just do uh, 1.5 right here. All right. So. So this kind of gives you an idea of like, all right, so we started off uh, with a darker image and I can kind of show you, uh, oh, no, stop that. <laughs> all right. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So here's the before, here's the after. I just have to get to the, have to put my hands underneath the microphone here so I don't hit it. So we we're starting off with a dark image like this and we've brightened it, but we still kept the background, you know, well lit and all that. Now this photo unfortunately isn't very centered very well and it's kind of like kind of sideways uh, and tilted and angled and whatever. So uh, probably because I'm holding the camera sideways and I tend to have a, tend to over um, turn my hand sometimes and so my uh, horizontal is more uh, kind of a more of a diagonal on this shot you can kind of see on the picture frames this should be flat so if we were to adjust the photo it would shot would be more like closer to this but when I do that when I do something like this I end up cutting off like her knee and her head and I don't want that so we'll put it back to here and then I have my own little set of filters over here. And what these do is kind of a whole variety of things, uh, mainly just kind of like a quick retouch. So when I'm doing a lot of photos, I'll apply this little custom filter that I made and you'll kind of see what happens when I turn this on and off, maybe. All right, let's see. I'm kind of checking my settings up here. Okay, cool. All right, so, yeah. So let me check real quick. I didn't know I could do this. I just thought. So before I go too far, since I'm doing this on the Tiggy Talk, uh, how do I, how do I view my TikTok? <laughs> Can I see my live stuff? Can I see when I'm live? I don't know. Huh. There has to be a way to see that, right? Oh, I don't want to see those people. What the heck? No, I'm just 
nope, that's not it. So, all right, that says sensitive content. Uh, I'm just seeing, just real quick, if I can actually see my own. Oh, look at that. Just real quick, if I can. <laughs> and it's working, cool, that's awesome. Uh, and I'm repeating. Can you hear that? That's weird. All right. How do you? Can you hear that? That's weird. All right. All right. Cool. I'm just gonna kick that off. Now that I know that's working. Wow. All right. I can't believe it. Streaming on three things at the same time. <laughs> I don't know if it's any good. Uh, hopefully the. It doesn't look like it's actually coming through pretty fast on on. TikTok, so I don't see any like real crazy lag. I know YouTube lags up like two minutes behind, so that's kind of strange. So, all right, so now back to the photo. So we've done a little bit of correcting on this, on just the uh, uh, color um, tone. I don't know why it's going like that, that's odd. Let's make that back, there we go. Uh, go back and then, and then, all right, whatever. Uh, all right, so go back here and let's reset this photo and I just reset it as shot, hit enter and watch it disappear. Why are we, okay. <laughs> All right, so now if I hit that, yeah, there we go. So that's the before, that's the after, after we kind of brightened it up. So now I just added um, my uh, little preset, custom preset, and it does a lot of things at one time. And and we can see over here, it creates a lot of mask. So I have a mask for like the eyebrows, the teeth whitening, um, it enhances the iris just a tiny little bit, uh, helps out and detects the hair. And a lot of this is using all the new AI stuff that's built into Lightroom now. And it will actually uh, recognize the eyes, the teeth, the lips, the hair, um, eyebrows, uh, the face. And you can do, I added an extra step for clothing and the actual body skin tones because it separates the face from the body skin tones because a lot of people's faces uh, they are usually a different color than their body skin tone and that's because people like tan and then they wear makeup and the makeup uh, doesn't allow their face to tan the same as their body or their makeup coloring and foundations and whatever uh, are a different tone and reflect light differently so uh, like 99% of the time someone's face is usually different than their body unless they're, you know, Hollywood makeup artists or something like that. Uh, but that's not a big deal. We, we end up correcting or I end up correcting that. And most photographers, you know, that do this kind of stuff will usually balance that out if it's like crazy. A lot of times it's not too bad. So that's kind of what I do with all of these. And then I have my last, uh, that my last, um, I guess mask that gets applied is what I call a face light and I hit the uh, H and turn it on so you can see it so this allows me to usually I use kind of use this either to brighten up the face or to brighten up the whole body or just to bring a little extra light in the foreground so I'll leave everything else alone in the background and allow me to tweak just the foreground in kind of a gentle way so you can kind of see what we're doing here bringing up the texture uh, I mean the uh, lighting just a little bit and now I'm going to move it off to the side and then I'm going to do the same thing with the highlights. So bring down the highlights. All right. And then we're going to bring up the probably clarity just a tad. Just a tad, not too much. And then over here, we're going to bring uh, the curves adjustment, which is kind of a new thing with uh, Lightroom, where they just added the ability to use curve adjustments on the actual mask, which is about time because Photoshop's done that for a hundred years. And so, uh, so what we'll do is we'll bring down the, uh, the darks a little bit. So when you're looking at these curves adjustments, um, everything that's on the left side is your darkness and everything on the right side is your brightness, you know, the light. And so you can see it kind of spikes on the left side of this, uh, what they call a histogram. 
and that would be because the majority of this image is dark um, even though it may not look like it everything from this this little fur rug to her to this you know area in the background and this blue is all considered uh, dark and mid-tones so we have the darkness which would be this rug and her mainly and then the, this area here in the middle of this histogram over here uh, would be um, in the uh, mid-tones and then everything on the right side is going to be all your highlights like so mainly the window and stuff like that and this uh this thing will change over here as you adjust the photograph and that throws people off a lot of times because they'll brighten the photo and or darken it and then this thing's all out of whack again so uh, it's just something to uh, pay attention to all right so that's what we got there turn that off and if you're on the TikTok side of this uh, you're not going to see all the stuff on the right. I have it centered to where you see the screen. So if, you, uh, if you're if you on TikTok and you see it, you can pop over to YouTube uh, under uh, Neil Bailey Studios and you'll actually be able to see uh, the whole screen um, because TikTok, uh, I can only show it in like a uh, phone format, uh, you know, vertical format. So, all right, so now we have this and then this is where we started and this is where we're ending up right now. And it's looking pretty good. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to go to like 100%. And I can see that now that we've raised this up and I was shooting kind of in a dark space and room that we have a little bit of noise in this photo. And now we can go over to Lightroom and go to the details panel, which this used to be where you, you know, try to reduce the noise. And I like noise a lot of times in the photos, uh, but I like to try to remove it and then I end up bringing it back in a different way. And so I can show that at the end of this, uh, at the end of this uh, edit, basically. I usually do that at the very last step and I'll do that in Lightroom over on the effects panel. And I will uh, actually add the grain, which was already added to it. I forgot when I, add, when I add my preset, it automatically adds the grain. But generally, I'll put my grain at like 15, 18, 20 in that range. Uh, and it will just help smooth the uh, overall image. And I can actually control the size of the uh, grain texture. But with this one, we're going to leave it the way it is. And then... Um, Let's see, I think, let's try the details and we're gonna try Lightroom's new denoise feature and just see if it's worth doing it or not. So I don't see that it's terrible. Uh, would be nice to get a little bit more details in like the eye right here. Uh, let's see, this thing's loading. So my files are huge. I, I shoot on a 61 megapixel uh, Sony A7R4 and then have an A7 IV as well, which is um, 48 pixels. So both of them make huge photos. <laughs> so uh, I, I try to, uh, you know, keep my photo size smaller, but you know, usually when I edit, I swear my photos end up being like two to two to four gigs uh, after editing in Photoshop. Photoshop will every time you do something, it makes it huge because every photo out of the camera is, you know, the smallest would be 60 megs and the largest is uh, 240, 250 megs each. And uh, and that's raw, so that's no color details or anything like that. So when you start adding all of the color, uh, it the photo explodes into a giant size. Why is it taking forever? I don't understand. It normally doesn't take that long. So, well, I guess it didn't like that. What's going on? All right, let's try that one more time. About to watch my computer crash out. This enhanced thing is pretty uh, intense on what it does. So it usually takes a second or, I mean, a minute or so. But my computer's already doing so much right now. I don't know, which is a fast computer. I don't know why it's kind of slow. But I've been like jacking with it all day. So maybe all the streaming stuff is slowing it down because I have multiple cameras running <laughs> and uh, one's going strictly to uh, TikTok because you have to do a funky method to do that. All right, 
well, that's just taking forever. So we are going to uh, skip this uh, deal as far as trying to do the denoise feature and see if we can zoom in. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. So now that we're at this, this stage here, I would normally like crop the photo and readjust uh, the alignment, but it's a little... Um, uh, wonky and off to the side so we're gonna see if we can fix this in Photoshop and I uh, guess I think the lighting is 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 okay at the moment yeah I, I could bring down the side lighting but I may do that in Photoshop all right so now I'm just gonna right click on uh, the photo and just say edit in Photoshop and I'm using the Photoshop beta version you can see it right there it's beta it's got this old black and white dude on there um, and the beta version has a lot of new features that are coming uh, hopefully soon to the uh, the more stable version of Photoshop. So on top of streaming to three different platforms, I am loading the most crazy <laughs> uh, version of Photoshop that may crash out. So we're just gonna push the boundaries with this. Uh, okay, all right. So now we have the photo in here, and I think the first thing I'm going to try to do the new uh, generative fill uh, for Photoshop where we can add, using kind of their new AI feature, add to the scene to give a little bit more space. Now, this one is a little tricky. Photoshop is kind of wonky with uh, what they're doing. Um, Oh wow, my computer's running. It's something bogging it down. I can just, it's not normally like this. I don't know what is, it's gotta be the, either the OBS or the Twitch side. So I'll see if there's a way to fix that in the future. Cause I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different programs going. Goodness gracious. All right, so let's do a crop on this and we are going to crop it up and see if we can add. I'm just gonna crop it like this, I think. Or do I wanna keep that over there? Yeah, I don't really care about the rug, but it would be nice to maybe go this way with the photo. Bring her in the center more, like this. Uh, I'll give it a little bit more space so that I can, so we'll give it more so that I can rotate it. Maybe I can do that. No, I don't want to do that now. Well, no, I'm not. <laughs> All right, so I have this just regular. So it's just gonna crop, create a black background. You can make it do like the AI generative thing um, when you actually do the crop in real time at that moment and it will try to like fill in all this black space with what it thinks the scene should be but uh it's a little it's a little much and half the times or more than half like 90 percent of the time it's wonky so we will do it like this and now i'll just take this little uh square selection and we will add this to the generative fill and I'm not going to type anything in like sometimes you can actually type something here like you would in you know uh, one of the many billion AI systems out there and tell it what you want but I find that it does a almost better job at looking at the whole image and figuring out what's supposed to go there which will be interesting with this photo frame and this is actually a screen like a little divider a room divider over here uh, so I'm just going to hit generative fill and there is a good chance it's going to give us a restriction uh, when it runs, which means that a lot of times when it detects a person in the photo and it figures out for whatever reason that they don't have a lot of clothes on or something or they're in a, I don't know, I think it's just a, a protective filter to, you know, in case you're dealing with nudity or something like that, the uh, AI is kind of locked down so you can't go and, you know, put or take off clothes on people or something like that. So a lot of times on perfectly normal images, it will just give you that restriction. And there's, I have a little workaround. So we may have to do that. So I'm just gonna hit generate and you can see it generating right there. And let's just see what it does. And it, I might get one, 
one uh, generative fill out of this. Yep, there it goes. I knew it. So uh, it's supposed to give three, but it gave us one, and it did a really good job. I cannot believe it. I was like, well, that's just crazy. Uh, so, so over here you can say you can say, it says pick your choose one of your three variations, and you can keep running it over and over. But as you saw for a brief second, um, no, I don't want to continue the video. Stop. Uh, so they're like giving you like information on it because it's a new feature. So as you saw, it gave a restriction warning at the top over here, and it only did it one time. It was supposed to be doing it three. So uh, that. The workaround, I'll show you, because I, 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 I I've not seen anybody do this, and I just kind of figured it out. I'm sure other people have figured it out as well. Uh, but if we turn this layer off, you can see it just took a black background, and it r actually took the frame and image in the right perspective and everything, and did something amazing with it. Now, the only weirdness is this... Uh, um, divider over to to the right it just took it all the way to the ceiling it's not a wall it's actually a divider and it's right you know maybe above the photo a little bit but that's fine like who's gonna know and you know it's okay it's a little weird there's, there's like a line there but i can clean that up but we're gonna turn it off and i'm gonna do my little trick which is basically i am going to take the lasso tool and I'm just going to do like a real rough just outline around her and it's going to trip you guys out just watch this and you got to get all of the person so and sometimes it's a like I'll have someone in a business suit and and it'll be like nope you can't do it because there's a person and we don't like it so I don't know. So I have this little selective uh, selection of this, you know, <laughs> gnarly selection around her. And I will just hit generative fill. And I'm just going to let it fill and replace her with whatever it wants. I don't care. All right. So watch this. <clears throat> okay. A lot of times I'll just remove her. What the heck? It actually put a... I have not seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> what is that man it's like a dog bear creature crazy thing coming out of the bed oh my gosh so so it decided that all this fur belonged to some kind of animal and that an that animal was needed to come out of the bed like something out of a dang horror scene uh but as you can see over here i know you can't see this on tiktok people so sorry uh but on uh Twitch and YouTube, you guys can see on the right side of the window, I have three different options. So I can choose each one of those and it just does whatever it wants, right? So it, I don't know, man, that's like a bird animal or something, half gorilla. <laughs> I don't know. And you can actually just keep running this over and over and over and getting a variety of different results. Like I can hit it one more time and you can kind of get an idea. I'm gonna take a drink. All right. Uh, so somebody's in the stream to say if you can hear me and all that, it's still good. <clears throat> okay, so it did something. All right, okay, yeah. So now, look at that, I put a table back there. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy. And uh, see, we have all these different options, right? Does a pretty good. I mean, it like replaced the flower on the painting. You know, like remember, this was the person sitting on the bed. Totally removes her. Like, look at that. I still, man, this AI stuff is a little scary. And you know, I still, I have like super hard mixed feelings against what AI is doing these days. And you know, I mean, I kind of figured we were going to go that direction. I just didn't think it was going to happen so fast. It's not going to be generation you know or two after me um but it's here and we got to figure out what to do with it so this is what i'm doing with it so i'll use it to delete the person and now as far as photoshop's concerned there's no human being in this thing anymore now we can put like a crazy creature in there like that but that's a little wonky and scary i don't want that so now we'll go back to uh to the selection and what I'm going to do is delete. No, I want to keep that one actually. I'm just going to do a new one and we will do a new selection here. And what I think I'll do is I'm just going to do a partial selection 
and we'll just do the generative fill and just nothing and just see what it does. So it should uh, fix the image and make another frame for us. Oh, that doesn't look so good. <laughs> and then that, oh, that's a little wonky too. Uh, that's better, but I don't know what's going on over here. Okay, so we're gonna remove that layer and let's go back to this first one that we did and move it above the layer now. So now this is the top layer and I'm just gonna hit generate and it will keep that original one, which I think is pretty good. Like I can work with that and take it and just see what it does. Ah, come on, it's, the image is removed. Please review the guidelines and try again. If you think this is an error, you can request a review. Request a review? I, I, that's, a new, that's a new thing. Um, let's do that again real quick. <laughs> what does request a review do? Like, how does that work? How long does that take? Request a review. Uh, include image and layer data with your feedback. What went wrong? Results were incorrectly blocked. I mean, I, I don't know. I need to read the actual guidelines and see. Maybe it just says no people or something. I don't know. Uh, so we'll just um, work with that. But man, I think it's getting smarter or something because it did not used to do that. So that's the one that we did where it did give us the image. So let's just start a new one and just create a new one and go from here. Sorry, I keep hitting the mic because it didn't give us that a minute ago. We got three solid photos out of with no uh, terms error thing and it should be fine now. Because, ah, no, come on, dude, what you doing? What are you doing? That's that normally never happens. <laughs> All right, let's put that layer down below. Let's select this layer. Okay, and then let's do the generative fill again. Let's try this. I don't know. You know, they are updating this application. This you know this Photoshop beta like two, three times a week now. It seems like, uh, and. So they may be getting smarter, like, oh, I see people are just blocking the person out. So if we do that, all right, so we're gonna try this other technique. So this other one, we're gonna hit um, Control, Alt, Shift, and E, and that makes a stamp layer, okay? We're gonna turn off all the layers. So now we just have this stamped layer. It's, this is the actual full image, all right? And we'll do the same thing. We turned all the layers off. Do a little selection and now hit the generative fill and this should work like it it i mean i don't know we'll see it may still see that image down here whether you turn that layer off now or not uh, but yeah man i guess uh i guess it's doing that oh, gosh i'm gonna have to figure something else out all right well as you saw the first time we got a decent photo or a decent um one shot which that is kind of rare actually and i wonder if uh type in now if you usually type something in uh a picture on wall just something simple uh, it a lot of times will go ahead and just f now that you've given it something specific it knows to focus on that and that this may help. So this will probably work. Watch it prove me wrong again. I don't know. No, okay, it worked. Aha, ooh, that's kind of nice, but all that's a, that's a long photo or a long image. All right, let's see what we got. Ah, that's better. I like that. Oh, that's wonky. Nope, don't like that. Now the cool thing here is you can actually hit the little trash can and just get rid of it. So I don't like that one either. And this one's pretty good. I don't really, the frame could be a little better. So let's just run it again. We'll do this a couple of times and see what we get. I know you guys are probably like, man, this is a kind of, it's almost more work messing with the AI stuff. But I'm sure this is just gonna get easier and better, you know, like all that stuff. So now we got like multiple frames. 
We got some weird wonkiness, like ghosts coming out of the photo now. And something going on there. So we're going to hit delete on that. Delete. Did I delete the good one? I think I deleted the good one. Damn. All right. So we're just going to delete all those. And hit generative fill again. Now, interestingly, I don't have anything written over here. And maybe it's working like that. So, nope. Yeah, you're a little rat. Okay. Uh, so, we'll just do wall. I mean, come on. Make it simple. All right. Do we have any action going on over here? No hellos or nothing like that? All right. Okay. Well, that's a little better. Nope. That's not better. And that's not better. Okay. But that one... That's kind of okay. Um, I don't really like it though. So let's just let's do it a couple more times until we get what we want, and see. I know I know I can do a better job. So uh, it's a little better. That's not so great. Get rid of that. All right, so we got this one, this one. Nope, don't like that one. And then that one. Oof, I don't like what's going on over. The picture looks okay. I think I like that picture better, even though there's some weirdness. All right, so let's go over here because there's like some strange stuff in behind this picture that might be throwing it off. So I'm gonna go to. Um, all right, so we can actually take this layer I'm gonna chunk it away. Turn on these again. Then we're gonna hide her again. Um, and maybe not, maybe, maybe, maybe let her be in the frame. Yeah, let's just let this one be in the frame. We're gonna come over here and just hit fill again with her in the shot. Just see what happens. Since we have a word, you know, giving it some guidance, it knows not to focus on her now, which I think, oh my God, what in the heck? Come on. Uh, that's, you know, uh, I don't really like that either. But that one, that's, that's stuck her in a barn or something. Um... Yep, I don't really like that one. Let's keep going a couple more times. <laughs> Gotta get something here. So this is like the real live editing stuff. Sometimes these dang photos can take, you know, I'll spend two, three hours sometimes on a photo. I know I shouldn't. <laughs> uh, you know, but I, I do more artsy, you know, type of editing and photos. And so it's not it's kind of worth it to spend time on it if i was doing like you know i had like three thousand wedding photos or something then i would just you know do a quick selection of the best and then throw a filter on it and see you later be done um all right let's try something else here let me go back i'm gonna put this one above turn that one on and let's just do uh wall on this one the wall result kind of gets a decent um, result or the wall word <laughs> give something decent alright ok what do we got here nope uh, that's not like too bad Hey, that might, that's actually kind of good right there. I like that. I can clean up that little thing. So, all right. So let's go with this. And then I'm going to come over here and just, uh, not with that selection. I'm going to create a selection like this. Go underneath that. Same, oh, close it off. Do the same thing. You just type wall. And see if we can kind of get rid of that photo or whatever the heck 
that threw in right there. Just replace it with a plain wall. It's throwing more art <laughs> in the space, which isn't bad. I just, I don't know. That, that's kind of interesting, but I, I don't really like that. I mean, what? It's like a piece of wood or something. Uh, let's just say, let's. I want to keep those there and just type in blue wall. See if it will kind of get the hint that we just want to select this wall texture, which is kind of a blue gray. Or it's really like, actually it's behind me. It's like a dark blue, as you can see. <laughs> um, okay, well, I mean, <laughs> It filled the picture in, which is crazy. Okay, so um, how about how about this uh, tiny photo? See if we can get it to re replace that. Ah, oh, come on, a tiny picture. All right. See if we can get it to replace that with just a tiny picture, and then I can do a quick little edit on that. That is not tiny. That's a little smaller. Uh, how about small? Come on, you can do it. Mouth is dry. You were not giving me small stuff. Okay, so, all right, we're gonna delete that one, delete that one, delete that one. Uh, I, I kinda like that one. And this, I might be able to take this shot here, okay? And might be able to do uh, like a patch. Let's do a little patch. Nope, I like that. Oh, come on. I, I don't have my pen on right now. What? Yeah, okay, so we're gonna just drag it over here. See, that, that's not that's not quite what I was looking for. All right, and just drag it over here. Yeah. Okay. I'll just back out of that real quick. And I wonder, if I can, all right, where's my, get my pin out. And we're just gonna select some wall over here. Oh, uh, current layer, we'll just do current and below. So we'll select the wall here and then just see if we can just erase this. All right, I know what you're thinking. It looks horrible, and it does. All right, that's okay. I'm okay with that. I just want to get rid of that picture. I don't like it right there. Okay, I know this looks horrible. And I may undo all of that. And then if I do the patch tool, uh, oh, it doesn't have it where I can do that. Hmm. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do another uh, selection here like this and just uh, do generative fill and type in wall, oops. W-A-L-L, -L, if I can spell it right, one L or two L's. <laughs> See if we can get it to smooth it out for us. Kind of hit or miss here. How many people we have on this? All right, we got some people. Nobody saying nothing. Man, you crackhead. Um, why did you put the picture back in there? Ah, oh, come on. Okay, well, we'll just get rid of that layer. I don't want to mess with that. And we will go back to this one. Um, 
All right, then we'll go to our history over here. Get rid of the clone stamp. Go back to <laughs> put in the picture there. All right, so we'll just go back in time for a second. Uh, let's go back on the history a little bit more. Oh, okay. Uh, let's get rid of the patch. Go back past the patch tool. There we go. All right. And then we're going to replace it with this. That's fine. I can deal with that. No way I'm not like just spending all day on this. Where's my uh, layers? Okay. That's my little action script. Okay. Now I think we're going to do this over this way and we're going to select this whole side and do the generative fill. Let's just do it one time without typing something, just see if it gives us anything. All right. Oh my God, it did. I can't believe it. It gave us three. See, like sometimes I don't know, it just works and then sometimes it doesn't. Oh, that's kind of nice. Hmm. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, I think I like this better because this we're gonna end up cropping this out. I'm gonna turn the whole photo. So now I'm gonna take the photo here. I already have it to the right perspective, but now we're gonna like align it a little bit, okay? And then we're just gonna recenter her like this, bring this down, tighten it up just a little bit like that, bring it in like this, maybe straighten the photos just a little bit more like that, and then crop it. Look at that. Like, really? I mean, could, can you guys really tell? I mean, you pixel people, you can kind of tell over here and there's like a little line. All right, so now that I've done all that, what I'll do is I'll do a stamp layer. And so that's where you hold uh, Control, um, Alt, and Shift, and E all at the same time. Just basically all the option keys on the keyboard and the letter E. And uh, and what it'll do is it'll basically take all of these layers and all of these little things where we see what we did. We just pieced and put little pieces in and made like a whole new studio. I mean, this is my studio and none of this stuff was over here. And then we'll do a stamp layer and uh, hit everything. OK, did it do it? It didn't do it. Control Alt E. Come on. What are we doing here, man? All right, and we can also get rid of this layer too. And while well, that one turned out, no, not that one. We'll get rid of that one too. All right, so control out E. There it goes. I don't know why it wasn't working. All right, I think it is like, hey man, you're, uh, you're doing too many things. So, <laughs> I mean, come on, look at this photo. Like this, uh, this up here is the pixels at the top. We start at zero right here and it is 4,800, 5,000 pixels wide by, I can't even read this number over here, by 6,400 pixels tall. So, I mean, it's a big photo. We're already at, let's see, we are at a, 227 megs so far and we haven't even done any editing <laughs> so kind of crazy all right so now that i have the stamp layer and i have all all of those um crazy things over there uh, i could get rid of those and probably will to make this small uh, make this a smaller file for now so let's just go ahead and delete those normally i'll keep them around but right now I'm, i've got a lot of stuff going on with the screen so now we have one uh, image i don't know why the file size didn't go down but whatever um all right so now now i'm going to go in here i'm going to look at the photo 
and see if there's anything that needs adjusting. So this is kind of where I'll go through the liquefy stage. And, you know, I'm not one to like thin up people or reshape their whole bodies or their face. I don't jack with any of that stuff. Uh, what I will do is I'll adjust like some hair and I'll adjust uh, like a strap or maybe, a, a, you know, something like where there's a, where like say a bikini bow is weirdly sticking out and I'll adjust it and sometimes when people are sitting down it can like square off their rear end and not make it as round as it really is kind of thing or maybe their foot is under uh, they're sitting like on their foot or something so then I'll just like reshape it uh, slightly just to make it a little bit more natural looking uh, just to help with the symmetry of the photo but this one looks pretty good I can kind of see a little area here like right here that I could adjust a little bit. Um, so I might do that. I don't see anything. We kind of like the messy hair look. That's a big thing that I like. So I'm always having people uh, just totally destroy their hair, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Some of the girls I know get a little upset, uh, you know, because they spend all this time, uh, you know, making it look perfect and, and then I'm like, no, throw your hair around and uh, make it messy. And they're like, what? But once they do it and then they see the photo, they tend to freak out and be like, oh, my God, that's exactly what I like. So, yeah. I, all right. So we'll just go into liquefy real quick. Just make a couple of little tiny adjustments. So I see they just kind of bug me. And doesn't really affect the photo much. So, also, like some areas here, um, you know, she's leaning over towards me. And so it makes like this crease right where the belly button's at. Uh, it's not such a big deal on this photo, but I might do something with that. All right, so we have like this area where the strap um, to this, uh, I think it's just like a swimsuit or something, is getting a little wonky. So, what I'm gonna do is just just kind of move it around a little and just just kind of tweak it to where it's a little more nicer in a sense of just not looking like it's pinching you know and then we'll go with this tool here and just re fix the skin all right and then come over on this side do the same thing and just take this and am I, I'm actually adding some width so if you see we're kind of widening the hips a little bit more naturally you know and then I'll push in a little bit right here a little bit right there just ever so slightly uh, again just to keep things more on the natural side all right and same thing right here okay so just so see you can't even really tell but it just kind of cleans it up and if i turn it off and on like let's zoom in on it so you guys can see oh shoot come on uh all right try to line this up for you guys on the tiki talks all right so this is the before and that's after before after after before after Kind of get the idea okay so it's just like a small tweak and you know honestly didn't really even need uh, to do it but it's just one of those things that you know i try to just tweak tweak it if it just really I, you know gets to me <laughs> uh, a lot of people would not even mess with that uh all right so sometimes also with this photo um, you know, with this tool, a lot of times I'll take it and uh, sometimes you can actually drop people's shoulders a little bit and, and, and kind of tilt their bodies, you know, give it a little bit of shape. I know I'd like mess with their face, but I, I'm kind of just doing it as a, an example. I'm not actually going to do that. But uh, sometimes I can, you know, I usually will have people lean their shoulders, kind of trick, 
you know, create more of a triangular shape. She's like f directly face on, so there's no point in it on this. Uh, but you kind of get the idea that you can really use this to um, move a shoulder out of place, you know, like that. And then you'll come over here to this repair tool and just fix like where it messed up this frame. And then this little tool can come in and kind of blend everything together. See, real nicely. See that nice little effect right there? And then it looks, you know, fairly normal. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're going to go back. Undo, undo. There we go. All right. So that's good. That's all the, that's all that is. So basically just the hips. Let's double check. Yeah, just ever so slightly. Okay. And then say okay on that. So now we're good. Now we're on the uh, main photo again. And... Uh, Gonna look it over just real quick, and I'm gonna use the new Photoshop Magic tool. Um, and this is a new tool too. So this is a new AI brush, and it's really good. So here's a crazy little flyaway. So you just like draw right over it, like that, and it'll automatically get rid of it and fix the skin and everything. See that? Isn't that crazy? That's not the best. It didn't do the best job though. So we're just gonna focus to there. Yeah, look at that. I mean, come on. That's it. Now, that kind of feature I can get behind because it saves a lot of time. And then we have this line right here. We're just going to use it to blend that line. I, you guys probably can't even really tell or see that. I'm on a 4K monitor, so I can kind of see that. And then same thing. I'm just going to dab in these little areas where there's a crease in the photo uh, from doing all that AI replacement stuff. So this it's just balancing. I told you it would fix right here and then get rid of this line where you can see that seam and it just blends it so nicely I mean this is a time saver we can get rid of that little piece of hair like that. I don't mind some you know the hairs but we don't need all of that craziness going on all right and then here is another uh, then we're going to replace that line and it's thinking about it and then it just does it and then here's another line might have to do that one that might, that might make my brush a little bigger gives it a little bit more room to work with I'm just gonna dab it in like that and see see how like I mean come on that's just crazy stuff all right, so now we're gonna do the same thing here and then go to this line. Oh, it stinks about it. All right, look at that. Do it right there. Um, let's do it, yeah, there we go. All right, see how good that works? I mean, that's just crazy. All right, All right okay, now we got this weird differences of textures going on between the fabric so just get rid of this line yeah I think that's pretty good can't really tell all right and then this I'm just gonna do that we're gonna select kind of a big area so it has a lot to work with Let's see what happens maybe too big hmm yeah let's go back let's do it more like this and then Hmm. Okay, so I don't like that. And this might be an area where I would just do a little lasso tool like this. And just irregular, do the generative fill and just see if it gives us one little, one little thing. Dreaming up a new background. All right. See if it just does a little quick fix for us. Yeah, look at that. Come on. That's that's so good. And same thing down here. Just going to do a little bit like that. And do the generative fill again. This is uh, becoming a video on generative fill rather than uh, low-key editing. So that gave us a couple options to go choose from. I like that one. Uh, I like that one, too. I think I like this. Mm, 
I think I like this one. All right, and then let's do one more generative fill with this weirdness going on there. Blend those in. Oh, it's nice that it's working. You're not giving us a hard time that there's a person in the photo. Like I said, it's kind of weird. It's, it's a beta feature, so I'm sure they're going to fix it to where it just has a little bit more uh, understanding of what... Oh, that's a great one. Okay, so there we go. So now we have all of these. Just basically, I'm going to come over here to uh, uh, select... Now, which one are we doing? Um, layer. And we're just going to merge all the visible layers into one. So now we don't have any of that generative stuff. And keeping our photo still at uh, 227 megs which um, is actually quite a bit smaller than I thought it was going to be. Okay. What do we got now? All right, so now <laughs> I want to do some dodging and burning and some real photo editing stuff. So I'm going to have an action script over here that basically will create a bunch of layers for me uh, and some frequency separation uh, layers to help uh, get rid of um, help me uh, manage this, the skin textures and the color tone and smoothness of all the colors in the photo. I know that sounds like I didn't explain that well, but uh, I'll give you an eye. I'll give you an idea. The command is not available. Okay, stop. What the heck? All right, so select. Oh, get out of this little selection thing. Um, all right, so make sure we're on the right layer. Oh, I see. Uh, do my frequency separation and the first thing it does is it kind of brings me up to this little window here that allows me to blend all the uh, or blur all of the color I'm trying to get it to where I can see so I like to do this I forgot I can actually just click on it <laughs> um, so here's the textured photo and what I like to do is take the radius of this blur and make sure uh, it's keeping some, you know, where I can recognize what's going on, but it's blending all of the textures together uh, and creating a real smooth kind of painterly look. And that one, that's 14, 10. Yeah, I think I like 10 the best can still make out like the eye. The eye is a good spot to uh, to look at. Uh, we don't want to be like this, right? Where it, you can't make it out. You want to keep it. I usually find between um, kind of eight and 14, depending on the type of photo it is. Usually it's around 14 is my sweet spot for most, kind of in that 12 to 14 range. Uh, for this one, go down, there's eight. Yeah, see, see a little bit too much texture there. So we're going to go to 10 and then up to 15. Yeah, all right, we'll stick around 10. All right. And now it's created some things over here on our uh, layers palette. So I know if you're in uh, TikTok, you can't see that, but is there, I promise. And like I said, if you're on, if you want to see the whole thing, you can run over to YouTube. I'm streaming there right now, too. So you can see the exact same thing. Uh, so I have a texture layer and I have a color layer. And then the master layer down here, which basically just create a stamp of that. And then I'm going to duplicate this texture layer. It's always good to have a backup. But if I turn the texture layer off, and let's zoom in so you can get an idea. All right, so if I turn this layer off, you can see it's the blurry um, layer that we just created that it you know, asked us to create right off the bat uh, through the action script. So if I, if I turn it back on, you can see uh, now all the texture is back because this layer actually holds all of the texture in the photo. And then this one just holds the color information behind the texture. So if I turn off the textures, you can actually see, uh, I mean, if I turn off the, the uh, color layer, you can actually see all of the details in this gray layer 
Um, and this is just a special kind of a, a blended, you know, uh, high frequency separation where it's detecting all of the detail in the photo, like wrinkle skin, you know, little wrinkles and pores, uh, you know, the eye texture where the, the hair and the eyes are, all of that stuff. You know, we have the whole texture of the, the individual hairlines, the tattoo and the, you know, on the skin, all that stuff. And then we add the color back, bam, now we have an image. Okay. And if you, if you keep the second texture layer on, it'll actually add like sharpening to it. So it's kind of a way to add uh, some real intense sharpening to your photo, but we don't want to do that. And there we go. So now if I click on the textured layer and I come over to like the stamp tool, all right, and so say there is uh, just a blemish somewhere that we want to get rid of, all right? I will stamp over here and collect the texture from this area, and then I will uh, not do that. <laughs> Make sure we are on current layer <laughs> and not layer and below. So maybe that's important to keep that because otherwise it's looking at all the information below. So now we just want to look at the layer that we're on. So we're going to stamp the texture on the current layer and then just, you know, go over everywhere that we see uneven textures or, you know, maybe they, a uh, person broke out or something and uh, they, you know, have blemishes on their skin that they don't want. Um, and you can use this to just See, get rid of little bitty um, imperfections or blemishes or whatever. If it's something major, I'll leave it. You know, like if it's a, a birthmark or a beauty mark or something, I tend to leave it or I'll ask the person what they want to do with it, you know, and do that. So this is basically, I'm just taking texture from another part of the photo and just writing and drawing over the texture that I don't want to be there with a different part of the skin, you know? And it keeps it very natural. And I don't try to go too crazy. Like a lot of people come in and they'll like get rid of the, you know, the lines in, in a person's, you know, eyes and stuff. And some of the stuff is like, you want to leave it there like you know it starts not looking like the person if you go too far but some of the real you know people that do like intense beauty edit, edit, edits of people will get rid of that i don't really do that in my style of editing uh but again i'm editing more for myself and the art not uh for um like a pageant photo beauty thing you know, that I'd get paid to do. Now, if someone's, you know, saying they're paying me and they want that kind of edit, then I'll do that kind of edit because that's like a paid shoot and uh, and that's what the, the client wants. But on this, um, this is a good friend that I've shot with a few times and has a tattoo studio that's pretty awesome, does really cool stuff. So this is really just for the art on this one. All right, so we're just kind of cleaning these up. And just going. All right. She's on TikTok too, so I'm curious. She sees this. <laughs> um all right so and i'm not trying to get too perfect with all of this we're going to go through and worry about skin tones in a second you know like there's a little blemish smoogy spot right here and that's where i just removed the texture but now it still has the redness of what was there and kind of same thing over in this area next to the eye and this is what the color layer is for and we'll balance that out the color layer is good also for like say this bright area i can actually bring some color into that because it's a little too blown out um but i actually kind of like it like that so i may add a little bit and then you know mess with it later um so there we go 
and I'm not going to really worry about editing anything on the arms. I mean, there's nothing really else to edit. And with her, you have to be real careful that you just, you know, like erasing tattoos and stuff, you know, like that's, that's the, uh, the, the stuff you want to keep, especially these things. You, now on her eye on this side, she has dots and they're dots similar to this on her hand. So you can see these little dots right here. And a lot of people will be like, oh, I don't, we don't need that. And we don't need that. We don't, you know, and then they're like, then she'll come back and be like, hey, those dots <laughs> supposed to be there. So you want to really make sure you don't mess with the, and accidentally erase parts of tattoos because you thought it was uh, something. And always, you know, maybe check with the person and say, hey, is this part of your tattoo or what? If it's you know, kind of blurry or something. And that's a good way to do that. All right, so now we'll go to the color layer. And we're going to fix these by selecting the uh, mixer tool. It's kind of like part paintbrush and part mixer, bring that down. And I usually kind of vary the size of this from small to big, small, you know, even really big sometimes. And this is basically just taking color and moving it. So I'm gonna take color from over here and move it on top of this little smudge spot. So let's go here where you guys can see. And I'm just gonna generally, and I have this at like just only 15% uh, with how much it's loading the brush, and only 15% of the mixing, and then the 10% uh, is the flow. So it's really just very subtle. You can this you can get too carried away with this, and you'll start flattening the image out. You'll you'll start removing the different contours and textures of the face and all that stuff. So so now you can kind of see what that looks like and we'll do it before and after here in a second all right and and you can kind of see i'm just moving color around and it just oh, that's a little much see got carried away there all right and see that little spot there we just kind of got rid of that uh highlight and and kind of cooled it off or I mean warmed it up a little bit with a little bit of color same here okay and then do a little bit right there right on the face here just little tiny tiny movements and then under the eye it's kind of dark so I'll take some of the bright area that's right here and just move it up just ever so slightly you always want to leave a little bit. You know, it's always natural to have a little bit under the eye. Um, some people are like, oh, I don't like dark spots, but everybody is. I mean, that's just the way our eyes stick out of our head, you know? <laughs> um, that's how I feel about it. So some people will totally get rid of it and, you know, go for that. And all the, you know, Instagram filters and uh, iPhone filters will totally get rid of that stuff and make everybody super perfect but i find that everybody's uniqueness and imperfections and whatever you want to call it i don't really call them imperfections they're just differences is what i like about everybody's unique features you know like i like to highlight that i don't like to hide it and make everybody look the same it's boring so all right so here's the Deal. Let's put that in the middle where everybody can see it. All right. How many people we got on here? I know it's kind of late. Or it's really late. All right. So now if I turn that off, you can see what happens. See? Look at that. Look at all the changes that happened to the face. And if I turn the whole thing off... Oh, not that whole thing. <laughs> okay. Turn this off. Now you can see the textures come back, like right up here on the, right on this side. You can see we got rid of little little bumps and whatever, you know, just blemishes on the skin. And it didn't take very long. And just balanced out some of the color under the eyes and on the cheek a little bit. And that's something, you know, you can really get carried away and totally change a person's 
look by shifting where the shadows are on their face. You know, when you, you know, shadows are what gives us a face, the dimensions and you remove it or you flatten it out, then they lose their actual facial dimensions. All right. So I always do, it's a good idea to zoom way out and look at your photo really tiny and make small adjustments. Uh, it just kind of helps the eye see because when it's just really up close like this, you, it's really hard to for the eye to see the whole picture. All right, so there we go. That's good on the face. Look at that. All right, so now we're gonna add highlights. And I know you guys are like, man, there's a lot of highlights already going on. But I like to add a little bit, so I'm gonna grab the brush tool and click the highlight layer over here. And so now this tool is only set to 4% on the flow. And it's basically a uh, uh, kind of a curve. Yeah, it's just a curved layer and like an adjustment layer, like, a, you know, for doing curves that's pointed way down. So if I was to, you know, do this and I click on adjustments and I get rid of these things right here. Come on. Uh, oh, where's the... Uh, adjustment things that oh back there we go okay uh they changed this too so now we have all these presets into photoshop now i don't really like these but i can get rid of that because i'd rather use the ones in lightroom i think most people just stick to lightroom for the final preset that they're going to put on a photo but i don't know maybe that works for some people and then like if i was, if I was to do a curve adjustment layer and this is a highlight layer so basically it's just doing this to the image it's like cranking it way up and then then you throw a mask on it and and then you paint the mask out i know that sounds weird but that's essentially what you're doing so this little dodge and burn layer underneath it is that curved layer see it's all cranked up real high and then this one is the opposite is cranked up real low so when i go over here because it has a mask on it and if i control i that shows you how much is brightened it just basically turns the mask the other direction and then this is hide and that's reveal so if i just go back to hide go to my paintbrush and then i select the white color like this and then i uh, go to the mask only, not the actual curve, but on the mask, and I just gently paint uh, white onto the mask. It kind of erases the mask and then reveals the highlighted uh, curved layer underneath. I hope that makes sense. You would have to just kind of do it and then you'll understand. So I'll use this to add, bring in some highlights into the photo like this. So nose is usually good. Usually do a little swipe over the eyes like that. And then maybe over the mouth or something, but I don't know, her lips are already kind of pretty good. I might do one like, like that a little bit. And then uh, I'm not gonna worry about the teeth. Uh, then I'll hit the hair a tiny bit like this. And so I'll do this all over and then I'm actually going to come back and remove a little bit of what I'm doing. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but uh, there's a reason. So then I do a little splash kind of on the chest a little bit. And then on the legs, I'm going to do a little bit a highlight over the legs following just kind of the natural light in areas. Okay, do a little bit there, highlight that foot. Okay, so it's a little too bright. And I, I know that I do it a little too much at first. And you can see on the layer over here that it, what it looks like. Um, and if I turn it off, you can see how it's kind of made the image pop a little bit. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to contour and pop the photo. So I'll take this and turn the highlights on. Now I come back over to my brush and I flick the color over to black. So now I'm painting with the black color in the foreground onto the black uh, layer mask. And that's going to basically 
start erasing and hiding all of the uh, all of the uh, highlight that I let come through. And so I make this usually pretty big and I'll just dab around and basically calm it down and look at the picture from a distance, you know, because uh, you do everything up close. It's really hard. So you want to keep it at a distance. And then I, I just gently just swipe and start erasing some of the areas that I knew were too bright on purpose just to refine it just a little. So it's still there. See, we're still there like that but it's not too intense now. See, and it's always good to go and turn everything on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. And then I'll come in really close. I'm gonna flick back to the, uh, the highlight layer and her eyes are pretty well lit, but I usually like to do a little swipe under the eye a little bit. Um, and just highlight the eye just a tad. And then I'll come back and I'm gonna erase it a little bit and just kind of up and down motions. It really just varies. Like this is just one of those, like everybody has their own little technique. And then we'll turn it on and off. And that just kind of helps me balance it out. All right, so now that's the highlight layer. We're almost done. And now I'm coming down to the um, burn layer, uh, which is gonna make things darker. So we're going to add white again. We're working with white. So white's going to reveal the darkness on this layer and then the black will always hide it and it'll all be like that on all the mask layers. So now I use this, make it kind of big. And again, it's only at a 4% flow. I keep it kind of low. And then this I'll add a little bit around the face and the hair. And we're just slowly adding dimension. And this black, this dark that I'm adding actually is really what makes the image pop. This is the final. So I always do this one last. Okay, like that. Good to do it right between the fingers. Gives it a little bit more dimension. And then right over everything. And then right between the chest. So adds a little bit there. And again, and then one kind of on the dark side of the nose, just to add a little bit into there. See, look at that. So that looks pretty good. One little area I might, I might dark, I mean, brighten up uh, this eye. It's a little much in shadow and it's not matching that eye as much. But if I turn the darkness layer off again, you can kind of see how it's contoured the photo. So using both light and shadow, we've now added some dimension to the photo. If I turn everything off and then everything on, everything off and everything on. Um, so I'm going to come back to my color layer, go to my paint brush. I'm going to paint some of this lightness. Oops, not that much. Uh, into this area here. Yeah, I like that. Just balance that out a little bit. It was a little, a little too much, giving it kind of a raccoon effect. And so you have to watch out for that. There we go. So now I turn it on. See? See how it is? Just a little bit. Okay. Do a little bit of merging there. And then I'll probably go ahead and soften this line under the eye right here, just because it's just kind of standing out a little much. And so what I'll do is I'll just gently swipe over it, not removing it completely. Not Like I said, you don't want to totally get rid of the details, but just softening it so it's not like a focal point. Because that's basically what you're doing is you're trying to direct the eye where you want. All right, there we go. So can come in a little bit more here. And then I think to go back to color layer and a little bit of tweaking right there. Nice. 
So there's before, or actually this is the the after. Let's get this zoomed in so you guys can see it. So <clears throat> now we have before and then after. So that's looking good. All right, so now, I mean, we came a long way on this photo. Uh, we added using the AI, uh, the whole top of the frame, some other picture here that is not actually in the studio. Um, did something with this and this side added all of this extra fur over here because this photo was you know not centered and not tilted the right direction and it's looking good so i'm just going to close photoshop and say yes to save and now oh by the way the file well, it doesn't really say it still says 227 i know this file is not 227 megs we'll look at it here in a second it's not reading right it might be a beta issue uh, I don't know if it's going to tell me what the size of this photo is on this screen, but it might. Uh, detail? Does it tell me in there? I do not know. I don't know where, um, I know there's a place where it tells you that over here, but I don't see it. There is a details um, section, but I just don't see where it's at. But anyway, all right, so here is after our editing, and this is the before, where we're really close to the photos, not centered, it's off to the side. We cut off the top of the picture and the top of the screen over here. Um, and now we actually use AI to bring it back in. So we added, a uh, whole top of the picture frame, this section over here, and we've contoured her uh, skin tones and face uh, to make it look nice. And now we're time to do the final bit. So this is where I go and I'll actually throw some grain into the photo. So we're gonna do 15% of the amount of grain. I kind of have a standard 35 on the size and 70-ish on the uh, roughness of the texture. And that kind of helps blend a natural noise to the photo. And then I'm gonna add some uh, vignetting around the photo. See how we're doing there. And then I'll come over here and I may add a clarity um, radial mask. So I'll just do a mask here and then just put it like right here. And then I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to adjust the blacks just a tiny bit. Actually, I want to do clarity first because that usually adjusts the blacks automatically. So this will make the definition of the tattoos pop a little bit. Um, then we'll add some to the texture. This will add a little bit of uh, detail to everything. And then come over here to our shadows and kind of bring in just a little bit of shadow in a center section just to make it a little bit more natural like that. Cool. So there we are. So here is uh, where we started. So this isn't even where we started. So the actual photo is, oh, the actual photo is this. That's where we started. Uh, did a little tweaking first in uh, Lightroom and then took that image that's all tilted and slanted and not centered, uh, threw it into Photoshop to center the photo, use AI to create uh, additional, uh, in addition to the background, you know, that wasn't, didn't exist in a real photo. So as you can see, it, it's not in the photo over here. I had to actually add to the photo. And so that's where the AI helped. Didn't touch her at all as far as the AI features and use my uh, uh, preset over here to do some automatic automatic stuff that enhances the eyes, the hair, the, you know, whitens the teeth and all that stuff. And all, the, all her teeth were really white already. So um, we kind of get an idea 
of what that looks like. So if I just do a virtual, create a virtual copy of this, and then I'll go to the original photo. Oops, where is the original photo? The original photo, and then I'll just hit reset. All right, so now that's the before, and that's the after. Before and after. So I think it looks pretty good. Um, I'm happy with that. And you know, last a couple of few days, or a few days, a couple of few days, a few days ago, we worked with this photo. So if you go back into YouTube and look at the previous live stream, uh, we worked with this and she had a big breakout right before the shoot. And so we worked on this part here like that and had to deal with these textures. And then we ended up with this photo right here. Oops. So we went from this to this. Just added some, you know, brightness back into the photo because it was like again, like I said I, again earlier, um, I shot this in a way where all the light was behind her, and so she's all in shadow, and so I'm using this rim light like around the hands and all that to add some definition uh, to to the outline of her hat. You know, there's a rim light around the hat, and then then I go back and add light to the photo and make her pop. So. Um, so that's it on this. And I think maybe you guys who come in and watch this, leave a comment or something. Cause I know like, uh, yeah, once I'm done with this, it seems like a lot of people will catch the rerun of this. And so if you catch it, you know, let me know if you want me to edit some more in this series of photos of her. I have some other stuff where we did like more, um, like boudoir type stuff where, you know, she's laying down on the bed and like this kind of stuff, you know, um, just whatever. So, and everything is fairly appropriate. <laughs> uh, and then I have some other ones like we could do, uh, some stuff where I do like bodyscape and that's some of my favorite. So I did these right here um, in black and white. So there's the black and white. And then we can see uh, some others where, you know, these are like not black and white, but you kind of get an idea of like just water. And then here's some real artsy black and white. And so not a lot of editing done to these. You know, this is like the unedited version. And then uh, and then this is edited. <laughs> so I just added a little bit extra punch to the light. Um, same thing with these, you know. And let's see, we got another part in the series here. Um, you know, a lot of different stuff. Did uh, one with this one. This one was an interesting one where it's like this, but the original is like this. So we did that and kind of tweaked it, right? They used some of the features in Photoshop to straighten the legs up and kind of just slightly alter it. And then I'll we'll skip those. Uh, and here's another one. So, and these are like super high detailed. So if I zoom in, you know, oh gosh, dang, go to, 200%. So you can see all the details are there. You know, you can really see the skin tones into the tattoos. And I don't just shoot just tattoo people, by the way. I just, I, this just happened to me. <laughs> the last few shoots were like that. Um, so, you know, that kind of gives you an idea. And this one was a nice one here where we did uh, some kind of fashion shoots with the model, like just needed to, should like come down with that? like mean mean girl look kind of thing uh but it's cool use the fan throw some hair around um this is a uh cosplay one oh not, well it is cosplay but these are the edits and then the cosplay shots are over here this is um zantana is the cosplay character so that was a fun shoot and did a little bit of like Wonder Woman stuff earlier 
So these are Wonder Woman. And let's do the find the edits over here. So I took a photo like this and then just turned it into that. So I uh, did, did a one like, um, I guess it's not, is it not, not in here? Here, it's, uh, shoot, I don't know what I did with it, but whatever. Uh, so, and then, there we go. So, all right. Oh, these are some normal work shots of headshots and things that I'm uh, working on. Those are the raw photos. So anyway, so all right. So it's been like an hour and 30 minutes or something like that, I think. So I'm going to end the stream here. And like I said, you guys leave some comments on what you think uh, you would like to uh, see in the next series of edits. But I kind of like doing the live stuff. It's just fun just kind of talking to myself, actually. <laughs> uh and we will just uh, go that way. But all right, uh, I'm going to call it here and I will see you guys in the next uh, next video, I guess. All right, let's see. I got an ending slide to outro. Although it doesn't work on um, TikTok. So sorry, dudes. You just get to stare at her for a second. Uh, and I think I don't, I don't even know. Like I, this is the first time I've done TikTok, so I have no idea. Uh, how do I end it? Okay. I think people on YouTube can still hear me. But, okay, end. End? Pa oh, I can pause it? You can pause it? That's kind of cool. All right. Let's end it. Ah, stream for 97 minutes. Uh, to renew your access, you need to go live more than 25 minutes at least two times. See, that gives you an idea. I only I have seven days to go live for 25 minutes, they said. All right.